On this tutorial, we're going to texture map a model. Uh, the model is completed, so I'm going to marquee select all the components. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose assign new material. And I want it to be somewhat reflective, so I'm going to choose a blend. And then over here in the color node, I'm going to name it. And then I'm going to go out through the color node and I'm going to apply the default checkerboard pattern inside of Maya. And I'm going to hit six on the keyboard if I don't see it. And now I can see where this has been placed. Now I'm going to be using uh, planar mapping and I'm also going to need my UV texture editor. So to add the UV texture editor to my shelf, I'm going to hold control shift on either side of the keyboard and I'm going to go to Edit UVs, and I'm going to choose UV Texture Editor. Now I happen to have it up here already, so if there's more than one of the same element, I can simply right-click and choose Delete. But we're going to be using that element as well. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to map that texture on in a very uniform way, so that when I go into Photoshop, I can create my pattern and my skin or texture and it will apply to my model correctly. So uh, I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to hold down the space bar and I'm going to go to create UVs and I'm going to choose automatic mapping. And I'm going to deselect it and I'm going to go to the object mode and select that. While my texture editor is up, if I was to take a look at what I have here, I'll see that it's been mapped on pretty uniformly. In the case of cubes and basic primitives, the UV map is built into the geometry. So very often it's simply a matter of automatic mapping. Not always the case. Now I want to see my UV maps for each of these faces a little bit more clearly. So in the UV texture editor, up here where this little face is in the cube, I'm going to click on that to turn off the checkerboard. And then I'm going to click on the blue. Now, I can tell by looking at this and the model itself that on that cube shape, the checkerboard is pretty square. So now my next task is to go over to the UV Texture Editor and sew these panels together so I understand them a little bit better in Photoshop. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to choose Edge. Now, if I select a marquee one of the edges, there's going to be a corresponding edge down below on another UV map. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Polygon and I'm going to choose Move and Sew. And you can see it's starting to join these polygon faces or these sides of my model together in a uniform way. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and once again I'm going to go to Polygon, Move and Sew. So I'm very methodically going in and sewing these up in some sort of an organized fashion. I'll select this one and rather than go to Polygon move in. So I'm going to use the keyboard quick which is G. G repeats the previous function no matter what you may be doing in Maya. So let's select this one and this one would attach to that so I don't want to bother with that. I'm going to select one of these along the top edge. I'll hit G. I'll select this one and I'll hit G. So now I've sewn this together as one element. Now whenever we add textures and UV maps inside of Maya. We want to get them outside of this upper corner, this right-hand corner, until we've got everything in our model UV mapped. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to right-click, I'm going to choose Shell, and I'll hit W once I've clicked on that, and I'm just going to take that and move it outside of that corner. Now I'm going to go into my other elements, and I'm going to map my UV texture properly on that. I'm going to go down to the satellite arm and this is planar mapping as well and the axis I'm interested in is the Y axis. So I'm going to hold down the space bar, create UVs, planar mapping and I want to make sure that it's set for X axis, excuse me, the Y axis, which it is. I'll hit apply and if I look at my texture, you can see that it kind of did a pretty reasonable job, but it's distorted. So what I need to do now is 
while this virtual tool is available, you can see this virtual tool is comprised of these little cubes in the corners and this little wireframe. I'm going to go up to my channels window. And in my channels window, I'm going to change projection width and height to one even number. Okay, it's pretty arbitrary the number you want to choose as long as they're even. And you can see now it did a pretty nice job mapping that on precisely. So once again, I'm going to return to the object mode for this geometry. I'm going to go into the texture editor. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose shell. I'll marquee select this because it's comprised of more than one piece, even though it's merged or combined. And I'll take the move tool and I'll put that outside the corner. All right, I'm going to right click, go back to my object mode. I'll go to this panel now. And that also is going to be Y axis. I'm going to hit apply. And once again, I'm going to go to the channels window to make sure that the projection width and height are the same number. I'm trying to keep it pretty much at five. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to texture map this panel. Again, that's the Y axis. So in my planar mapping, I'll click on apply. And once again, I'm going to go to my channels window and change both projection height and width to five. I'm trying to keep this number consistent throughout the model. I'll take that and I'll drag that out of the upper right hand corner as well. So it's a matter of now going in and identifying all those elements that would be in the Y, X, or Z axis. It just so happens that with this model, a lot of these elements are all pretty much in the Y axis. So I'm going to go and I'm going to plot those. Once again, I'll take that little half sphere, I'll hit apply. I'll come over here, make it five, and so on. I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it outside like so. And then I'll go and I will map this one, and then I'll return and we'll deal with that cylindrical or that conal shape down at the bottom. All right, so I've gone in and I've texture mapped using the Y planar axes, the rest of the components of my model. If I were to shift select them, they're reflected in the UV texture editor. So we've got one last element which we have to texture, and that's that engine shape. So I'm going to select it. Once again, I'm going to go to create UVs. And in this case, I'm going to use cylindrical mapping. I'm going to zoom in on that, and you'll notice there's a cylindrical, half cylindrical shape virtual tool on your model. I'm going to grab the red tab and I'm going to drag it around till it snaps to the one that's on the other side. It's pretty symmetrical. Now the only problem here is my rectangles have gotten pretty squashed. So I'll simply come over here and I'll scale this. And very often what I'll do is I'll make the panel much larger than I need the UV map just so I can see these a little bit more clearly. And then once I have something that reflects a little bit more true to a checkerboard, I'll scale the whole map down. Now once again, I'm going to move that outside, that upper quadrant. I'll go back to my object mode. Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to gather these UV maps all together in that upper quadrant and export it out as a UV snapshot to be opened in Photoshop to create our texture. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my object mode, and I'm going to shift select all these elements that comprise our model. And now I'm going to start to gather them and pull them in. So I'll start by right clicking and choosing shell, and I'll put that down here. I'm going to scale this. Now, it's kind of a subjective point now because you just have to determine what you feel is the larger elements that would be on screen or or have a larger presence in the context of the model. So the body of the uh, satellite is predominant to the size of the actual model. So I'm going to leave it rather large and now I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the panel, solar panel, and I'm going to use some of these tools that appear up here. This is kind of like a little red hooked arrow uh, circle with an arrow on. It allows me to rotate this and, and then I'm going to scale to try and optimize the real estate of that. 
that. Now, this is going to have the exact same texture. This is the outside panel of our model here. So I'm going to try and get that directly over, rotate, and then I'm going to scale that to fit pretty precisely over the panel with the arm on it here. That looks pretty good. So I'll zoom back. Now I'll get the uh, this one right here is that half sphere. I'm going to take that, put it over here. And again, there's no there is no road map, precise road map, and where you put these elements is pretty pretty subjective. As long as it remains inside this upper corner. So I've got this rocker on here. I'm going to grab that, and I'm marking pieces of my model that are comprised with combined elements so that they don't fall apart when I'm moving them. The UV map doesn't. I'll put this one kind of up here. I'm hitting F on the keyboard to get a little closer. I'm going to put that right there. And then the panel down here is that little conal shape engine. And you'll notice that it actually pattern kind of changes its uh, scale as you start to move these into place, and that's perfectly fine. Once again, I'm going to return to my object mode, and I'm going to reselect all of these elements. So if I wanted to, I could simply marquee select them. The last thing I want to do now is I want to go to Polygons, UV Snapshot. Up here where we see Browse, I would click on that, and I'd go out to my desktop where I would uh, place this in my UV uh, source image folder inside of my project. So I'll go ahead and I'll put this in my folder. I'm going to call it Satellite Skin. And I'll hit Save. And your dimensions are purely up to you. The larger this number, the clearer the resolution. But the larger the number, the larger the texture, obviously. So I'm going to set this to 1024 because its default setting is keep aspect ratio square because of that corner we we're talking about. Um, you'll see both numbers uh, change to be the same. Now, the image format should be a ping, so you get just a wire frame, and then you can develop your Photoshop layers from there. I'm going to click OK. Next, we're going to Photoshop, and we'll get this started and then link it back to the model.